So it's been a while since I've, uh, since I've done a little rant here on this channel. So I thought to myself, how about I share a little thought with you guys? Now this has been on my mind for a little while now, and it's the anniversary of the election of Donald Trump, so let me share a little thought with you guys, okay? Let me show you a little, uh, a little musing. I'm thinking to myself, it must suck to be Hillary Clinton right now. And this is coming from a guy who probably would have voted for her. Don't, don't take that as an endorsement, I just think that if I had to weigh the possibility that Hillary would start a nuclear war with Russia and that Trump would start one with either China or Korea, Hillary has like a 2-3% a less chance of doing that, so I, I'd go with the safer bet. Mm, what are the chances of a nuclear holocaust? Like, like 99% Trump and 98% Hillary. But it has got to suck to be Hillary Clinton right now, doesn't it? I mean, I mean, imagine this. Imagine, imagine yourself as her. Put yourself in her shoes. Th think, think this way. You're Hillary Rodham. You're young. You have political aspirations. You're going to be the first woman president of the United States. And one day you meet a man with similar aspirations. You marry him because you know, you you don't want to jump the shark. You know you're probably not going to be the first woman president so easily, but maybe you can get your husband to be the first president, and that'll be sort of your uh, your stepping stone to that. So for years you're, you support your husband. You just you work as hard as you can, and finally he does it. Finally, he's the president of the United States. Not only does he do this once, he does this twice, two terms. You've made it. It's in the bag. It's just a matter of time before you take his place and become the new president of the United States. First female president. That's gonna be you. But then, he fucks it up. He cheats on you. Publicly. Everyone knows. It's a giant scandal. And you want to leave him, but you know that without him, who are you going to use? Whose influence are you going to use to advance your political career? I mean, you're not qualified, you're not skilled, but if your husband used to be the president of the United States, you have an in. So, so you stay with him. You don't like him anymore, he cheated on you, it's embarrassing, but you stay with him and you wait. And you ignore all his cheating and infidelity, which continues on. But you're in luck, because the next president after him is completely awful. George W. Bush Jr. In his first term, he starts two wars. In his second, he destroys the economy. And you think to yourself, you've made it. I mean, people hate you, but they still love your husband. If nothing else, you can coast on that. You can coast on the goodwill left over from your husband, and on the anger at the Republicans. And if that doesn't work, well, you still have your pussy pass. I mean, just call anyone who doesn't vote for you a sexist. You have it made. The media is shilling for you day and night. People hate the GOP. There is no way you're not gonna win this. Except, suddenly, out of nowhere, a black guy. Overnight, all your fans in the press turn their back on you, and instead of calling the people who criticize you sexist for not voting for you, they start calling your own voters racist for picking you over Barack Obama. Hell, even The Daily Show stops filleting you, and then when you don't win the nomination, they run a segment mocking your angry supporters, implying that they're a bunch of racist, man-hating babies. So fine, you lost. And you decide you'll wait. You slink back into the background, and you wait your turn. Meanwhile, your husband gets into the hobby of uh, sexually assaulting or maybe even raping women, and you have to start intimidating them into silence. I mean, you have to. Otherwise, if, you, if you're forced to leave him, if another scandal breaks out, you will have no one to fast-track your political career and put you in important government positions that you are absolutely unqualified for so you can completely fuck them up and get people killed in the process while also lining your pockets with millions of dollars. So fine. You wait another eight years. And finally, your time has come. This time, you're not going to leave anything to chance. This time, you're going to do this. 
First thing you do, you rig your own party's nominations. Bernie, that fucking socialist Jew, it's fine. You collude behind his back and make sure that no one takes him seriously. That the nomination goes to you no matter what the actual voters want. Then you fund one of the most expensive presidential campaigns in US history. Millions upon millions of dollars. Just unbelievable amounts of money. So every channel is paved with commercials for you. Then behind the scenes, as Wikileaks reveals, and this is true, you have your own party. Y you guys, if you haven't heard this yet, you're not going to believe this. In a stunning move of unbelievable irony, promote Donald Trump as a Pod Piper candidate. The plan was to work behind the scenes and make sure that with the help of the, of the Democratic Party, just pulling some strings, well, I mean, or at least promoting him, at least trying to give him a little push with people who, are, who had a few degrees of separation from the actual party, that they will make sure that Donald Trump will become the Republican nominee because she, she was sure that she would beat him. The only person that the stupid American voter who is more easily swayed by name recognition than policy might choose over Hillary Clinton was the one that they secretly promoted behind the scenes. She has got to be kicking herself now. So your plan works. You're Hillary Clinton and your plan had worked. The GOP nominates Donald Trump. A complete buffoon. A bizarre, just completely out there idiot. There is no way you would lose against this guy, right? I mean, no fucking way. Not with the massive media blitzkrieg you've been orchestrating against him for 24 hours a day. There is not a chance you'll lose this. You're going to win. The polls give you a 99% chance of coming out on top. It is finally your moment. It's finally your day in the sun. You've waited 30 years for this, at least. And it's finally going to be all worthwhile. All the smelly Saudis you had to suck up to for oil money. All the people that died because of your incompetence. All the humiliation you had to endure. Staying in a marriage to a man who clearly doesn't love you. That everyone knows is disgusted by you. And who openly cheats on you. And is constantly caught doing it. The absolute disgrace of having to stay in this position. But you know what? Today. It is finally going to be worth it. You are finally going to achieve your dream. You are going to be the President of the United States. The first female President of the United States. It's finally all going to come together. And you lose. You don't just lose. You get devastated. You know, it looks like an almost respectable loss if you just look at the Electoral College. Now, it looks worse if you look at it by states where you won 20 and Trump won 30. But if you look at it by counties, my god. I mean, sure, Clinton got the popular vote thanks to a handful of overpopulated cities that always vote Democrats. But 84% of counties were won by Trump. It is an absolute landslide. The map on election day looks like a communist panties when she's on her period. You have been completely annihilated. And that's it. Your political career is over. Your own party turns its back on you and blames you for their loss. Your machinations of turning your daughter into the next heir of the Clinton monarchy, that's not going to happen anymore. All you are left with is your cheating rapist husband. So what now? Well, I don't know, but I can tell you what I hope happens next. I hope that Donald Trump doesn't run for a second term. No, no, what I hope is that instead of him, he steps down and the GOP nominates someone else. A woman. Any woman. Doesn't matter who it is. Doesn't matter how qualified or unqualified she is. Let it be Sarah Palin or Betsy Devos, anyone, no matter who. And I hope that they choose that person as their nomination 
and I hope that that person wins. And I hope that that day, I'll be able to sit back and listen to the inauguration and imagine Hillary Clinton's face at home as the announcer says, I present to you the first female president of the United States. President, not Hillary Clinton.